Hey everyone, it's Jennifer Shahadi again, and today I have a very special guest. Actually, guys, this is my first ever female chess teacher. Um, you know, it's now where I think people are starting to understand that's important for kids to have teachers that look like them. But at the time, I was already, I, I think, probably around. I don't know, maybe 11 when, or 12 when I, when I met Beatrice and she taught at a chess camp that I was at. And I, it was very meaningful as she was the first female um, chess master, chess champion who ever instructed me. She's a women's international master and she was also the first ever female president of the US Chess Federation. In addition to that, something she's done recently, which is very moving is she's organizing a tournament called the World Junior Chess Tournament for chess players with disabilities. This event is really inspiring, um, brings people together from all over the world and was even featured on CNN. So that link is in the show notes if you wanna check it out. Um, but she is here today to give us a little bit of wisdom and I'm so excited. Beatrice, thank you for joining. Thank you, Jennifer. What an honor to be here with you. Um, thank you for mentioning that I was one of your first, uh, your, I was the first uh, chess, woman chess teacher that you had. And I always follow your career. I'm very, very proud of you, your accomplishments in chess, your vision, your work ethics. And even by arranging this uh, talk, I noticed all the attention to details that you have and the time that you're putting into making this a, and, and a good memorable experience for, for everybody, especially the girls. Well, thank you, Beatrice. I mean, it's a difficult time for people right now. And I've heard from a lot of kids that they spend a lot of time on Zoom. So my perspective is if they're spending a lot of time in front of the screen, we got to make it engaging for them <laughs> to, to, to keep, them, keep them awake at this difficult time. You know, if you're a kid, summer camps are canceled. Let's, let's give them an hour that they can really forget about all that. Sounds perfect. I'm going to, um, to share the screen. And I want to show you first this position. And I think it's important for women and for girls to know a little bit of, of the history of, of other women and girls in chess. And the first woman world champion was Vera Menchik. And um, she was such a good player. She was so unique that even they created a club called the Vera Menchik Club. And basically that happened when a man will lose to her, they will go into that club. She even won a game against a former world champion, Max Elba, who eventually became uh, president of the World Chess Federation. But I wanted to show this position and I would like to make it a bit bigger um, just for us to see it better, right? And this is a game, this position comes from a game that she played with George Allen Thomas, who's famous for another game where the king is trapped. <laughs> we know this story, but let's stick to this one in particular. Vera is playing with a white pieces and George is playing with a black pieces. And she has been obviously planning an attack on the king's side. See that? With a rook, the knight, she's planning to open this up. She wants her rook to go into the game. One thing that you will notice is that good players, they know how to use their rooks. And the rooks don't get to shine in the beginning of the game. They get to do great things later in the game. Um, so in this position, white has castle on the queen side. See the king is here? While the player who's using the black pieces has castle on the king side. So we have castles on the opposite sides of the board. And in, in situations like this, it's like a race. Both players are racing to attack each other's skins, and whoever gets to attack the other player's skin first usually gets to win the game. And I'm going to cover the moves. I hope you didn't see them. <laughs> All right, because here, the first move for Vera, and I want you to take a minute to think about this, so far, the material is even, right? They both have a queen, they both have two rooks, they both have two knights, they both have a bishop and eight pawns. So they haven't exchanged any pawns. So the position is not open yet, it's close. But obviously the rooks, the bishops and the queens, they do better when 
there are not that many pawns in the board. So here, Vera decided to play this move. And this is a move that you will see in many positions like this. Obviously, it's a sacrifice. What is a sacrifice in chess? Is when we give up something in exchange for something else. In this case, this player, Vera, she's willing to lose the knight, right? And that didn't happen. I think I have to do this again. She's willing to lose her knight for a pawn, but then the purpose of this idea is to do what? Shall we capture with this pawn or with the other pawn? Notice that we want to open a file so we can attack the king. So it makes sense to capture this way, opening the king. And the king is in bad shape. This king has to be super careful. Oh, it's not allowed to go here. Let's see why. Why the king cannot go to h6? What piece is covering h6? So here we have a long range piece, the queen. The rook is also a long range piece and the bishop covering that square. The other possibility is for the king to go here, but then there is a checkmate in one move. How can we checkmate in one move, right? And I think we all see it at this point. We should take a minute to look at the whole board. The king is very open. And there are some interesting choices here, right? I see two good checks for the queen, right? That's, this is one. And the other check is to go to g5. So which one is actually a checkmate? Is this a checkmate or is this move a checkmate? Okay. So in this case, obviously, there is a way to get the king out of check. The king is not allowed to make any move. It doesn't have any safe moves. But then what this player can do is to block with the knight. And probably it's possible to get the knight, the piece back. But obviously, we will not go for a check if there is a checkmate, then we can go here and just end the game, okay? That didn't happen in the game, by the way. So because the pawn didn't capture. Instead, this player decided to capture with a knight. And again, we need to consider that our options, huh? whether we want to take the pawn or the other pawn. But always keeping in mind that it's a good idea to open the file so the rook can attack. So Vera, obviously she was planning this all alone, she captured this way. Then this player moved the pawn down, thinking, well, maybe now I can go capture the pawn, attack the king. He wants to cause some trouble too. And here Vera played a move that is very, very good too. Aiming to trap the king, okay? And adding one more piece to the attack. So let's see if we can find that move. Right? So the main idea here is to make sure that we have ways to attack. We can start trading pawns and open things up, but also we can trap the king with moves like this one or even this one. But the square on h6 is very nice for the queen. It will be nice if we can go there at some point. Okay? So Vera decided to play this move, checking the king. With the thinking that if the king captures the pawn, he will get checkmated. So let's say if this happens, what can we do now? Well, here we have a very fun checkmate. It's called the Swiss cheese checkmate. So the first move is to go here, right? The king has almost no choices, only one move. And then what do we do? The pawn can come in. Right? And now we're ready to do the Swiss cheese. I so never they, heard that, Beatrice, that expression, Swiss cheese. Yeah. It's because of the holes. Okay. Because of the holes around the castle, like the cheese and the market that, you know, we can. And the other player doesn't have a way to stop them. Maybe temporarily was this move, right? But it wouldn't help that much. You know, we just take that guy. And if check, we don't take the corner because then the queen will come down and check the king. So it's best for us to use that pawn as a double agent, okay? Just, we go here, and the queen doesn't have a way to come in and check. See that? And this pawn is safe. What piece is protecting the pawn? 
59 grand. So this will be, the game is basically over. The end is beautiful, I love it. That didn't happen, by the way. So basically, at this moment, that didn't happen at all, okay? So what happened is after check, the other player went here, Vera played here, the other player went check, and I love the idea of the double agent, agent a pawn that could be useful for us. The mm -hmm. other player is hoping that we will take and then the queen will go in and cause lots of trouble, right? But we don't have to capture that pawn. In fact, that pawn can help us shield our king and just protect it. And the pawn is not hurting us and the pawn is safe, the other one. So that, that happens. And then takes, takes, and the final move. Nice. Yes. Love it. What's the name of this checkmate? Is it called like the corridor or something? The corridor, yes. Right, yeah. And it's a checkmate, it's a corridor checkmate. Love it, the corridor. It's a wonderful checkmate. game played by Vera Menchik and um, it's very interesting. I mean, I was reviewing many of her games and she was a very good tactician. And, um, and obviously she was always very driven. In all her games, you see her decided to win and that's, that's impressive, you know. I know. It's so sad that she died at the age of 38. It's just unbelievably, it's ridiculous, you know? And she, you know, you know, in her, um, her final days, she, uh, it was very unlucky because they, there was a bomb shelter across her house. And I guess they just didn't realize how serious it was. So they went to the basement instead, or maybe they thought they didn't have time. So they went to the basement and it wasn't strong enough. Didn't, it didn't shield them. Uh, so, so uh, such a terrible example of how there's so much random chance in life, you know, and it's not always, not always fair. But um, I love this example. This is great. So I wanted to show one game from Nona, who was actually the first woman, the first grand woman to be made grandmaster. She didn't, you know, that was an honor. This is uh, Nona Gaprindashvili. I played her when I was very young in France. I, she didn't remember when she saw me. <laughs> well, I, I lost the game, but she was, she was a fantastic player. And um, she's playing with the white pieces with Alexander Blag Blagitsi, another Georgian player. Eh? So she played this line, which is, this is called the Grand Prix attack against the Sicilian defense, right? But it was bishop b5 instead of bishop c4. And then, but you will see why I love this game. Because the, the idea in the previous game, it was a close position in which we wanted to open up the fire for the rook. And, we had, and they ended up, you know, checkmating with a, a, you know, on the h file. But here in this line, I'm sure this is a preparation, by the way. Um, Nona decided to give up a pawn in the opening. So this, and we will see why. She gave up the pawn, but obviously now she's opening up her bishop, right? Attacking the queen. And then once she cancels, she has also the rook into the half open file, pressing on this pawn. And you will see here a massive attack from the white side. It doesn't look it because this player is thinking, okay, I'm going to cancel on the next move. But the next move is just fantastic, okay? So here, stopping the castling. Yeah, so if king cancels, obviously, I wanna show this to the girls. Every move about stopping the king from being safe. And the knight move, and then the knight is coming in. Nice. It's and then it's knight h5, so g h5, and now... Yeah, she's attacking here, and obviously she's looking for, and this player capture, and this block. Wow. Ah, yeah. Hunter. <laughs> That's a wide move. I mean, and it's queen really... H, queen h5 and rook f1, very nice. Well, actually, this is a draw. <laughs> it's not a win. Really? This is actually a draw, yeah. Ah, okay. this is a draw, but she didn't see it. I mean, we can analyze it tomorrow. Yeah, we'll show, we, you'll analyze it tomorrow, but yeah. But then you will see how this player went back to protect. And again, I was looking at the queen takes pawn idea. 
Nice pawn to because now the bishop on c4 is unleashed. Yeah, the king cannot capture the rook. So this move, and uh, but actually king takes rook as a draw. Uh, let's see why. So if king takes, and then here check, right? Where can the king move? So you have to, I think you want to go to g8 to stop an immediate mate. Right. right. Here. And now you can go h6, yeah. And h6, exactly. And now uh, you're saying after queen f7 check and bishop f6, you just have rook g8? Yeah. Here, right? Mm -hmm. Here, rook g8. And again, I think it is better probably to go for a draw earlier because he, this player may lose. Because you don't want to lose, yeah. Yeah, and then just do the go right. to uh, two years. Wow. Yeah, it looks like there would be a mate there, but I guess not. And because the bishop, it's, the problem is the bishop on c4 can't get into the game. H That's the problem because the bishop really needs to get into the game in order to um, yeah. get to the king, which is which is beautiful because that shows why in the game that I, the line that actually happened, why white did win because she forced that bishop into the action. So that's why this player needs to be content or happy just with winning uh, um, at this point, just to check. I mean, here instead of rook f1, just to go check, I think. I will analyze it, Jennifer, before tomorrow. We will look at this. Yeah, okay, this is, this is a great line. It's, and so it's instead in the game, rook f7, queen e5, rook f5, and yeah, white's just totally winning. That's a nice miniature. It's, a nice, it's the, 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 the pawn sacrifice is intriguing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's another thing about the Georgian players, because I met them and I spent, I play in, in the early 90s, I play in two intersonals, women intersonals, so I have a chance to spend time with these women. Um, and one thing that I noticed is, although they were competing against each other, they were always together. They were eating together, they will come to the table together, they will live together, they will help each other tremendously. And then they even told me that they live nearby, sort of like, in a few blocks <laughs> distance from each other. So it was really a team. Um, so the Georgians, they have that, I think that support system allowed them to develop their skills. And, and then you see the same pattern with Judith Polgar and the Polgar sister, the three sisters as a pack. And I think that's the way how some women early on survive, you know, all the, <laughs> the adversities or all the obstacles of being a clear minority in chess, not that many women. That's a great takeaway. Yeah, for the girls, I think that's important for sure to hear about that, that, it's, that the relationships are so important in chess to find people they trust, other girls and women to study with and travel with. You, you definitely see that pattern in people who are successful in life and in chess. That's right. And in your case, Jennifer, I mean, you have your brother and you have a lot of friends from the same time when you were all teenagers, that you were very close friends and play chess together, travel together. I think yeah, but not people. everybody has a family that's a chess family. So that's what you see in a lot of successful female players, that they've got a strong chess family. But I feel like it's important for there to be women who succeed who don't have that. And that's where you need like the friendships and the, the mentors and the coaching, you know. That's right. And my games is a challenge a little bit. This, this is a very interesting game. Well, I shouldn't say that about myself. You know, with the age, with the open file, the same concept with the rooks. Right. right. Yeah, no, this is great. That's great. So you yeah. played, you played at uh, Queen H5 and they, they ended up getting made it on the, or Levitina, Yulila. Yeah. Uh, Levi, this is Jul Julia Levitan. Okay, Levitina yeah. Levitina was Irina Levitina. Um, she's still around. She's playing bridge. I know, I know. Did you, I actually, she taught some girls chess. She's doing some chess teaching. She worked with Diana Tourman. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's wonderful. So this game finished just... Yeah, the, 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 this, this is the move that I took more time to think about. And then it finished this way. <laughs> You know, obviously, I'm passing and the game is over. No defense. So that's one. 
candidate, and the other candidate is this game that I played with a woman who became a woman world champion later on, but this was like when she was younger, much younger, okay? Um, a Chinese woman, very tactical player. So we played a very act dynamic and active uh, game. But here she made a blunder and she played this move without realizing that she was going into a losing end game. Uh, because, let's, let's see. Um... And then she's lost because of the B6 pawn. Right, because you too many pawns to defend, right? Yeah. yeah rook D2, B6. Yeah. So she thought she forgot rook e3. She thought she could play like rook c3 check and rook b3. Right. Yeah. Then she gave up the pawn, but then. And I thought I played, I used to play better than now. I played this very precisely. And then my plan was to move the king all the way to a4 and b5 and <laughs> win, win the pawns that way. Um, very nice. Yeah, it's a nice same game, and this woman became a world champion and, you know, very strong. Very I remember nice. her. I don't think I ever played with her, but I think I, she was on the same team when I played against China in the Olympiad, um, and I, I, I saw her many times. She was really cool. She seemed like a really, cool. really yeah. nice and fun, fun person who really enjoyed chess and the opportunities it gave her. Thank you um, for, for everything. This was a great... A great inspiring lesson.